Mr. Speaker, I beg to move the following resolution standing in my name. Mr. Speaker, before I read the resolution, as Minister of National Security, I would like also to thank the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and the City Police. You see, Mr. Speaker, we always are very quick to condemn when things go wrong, but when things work, when things work out, we seldom say give the, the proper praises. The role in the police force has been under tremendous pressure over the last weeks and months and years, but particularly over the last few weeks. And, for, and they showed the, the resolve and the commitment to doing their job and understood that what's important is to remain focused. And they remain focused. And for the season, there was no, there were no major incidents. And I want to thank them for that, Mr. Speaker. I also want to comment, Mr. Speaker, on how it seems almost there are people who seem all, almost ready to rejoice at what they perceive to be things that will hurt the, go the government. And I speak about um, a, fake, a fake murder on the internet on Friday, which got wide, widespread publicity. And I want to call on people, that is very sad, Mr. Speaker, for these kind of things to be put out in that, in that manner. It doesn't augur well for the country, it doesn't augur well for the future of the country. But I want to thank the Royal the, 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 the Police Force, I want to thank the Commissioner and the men and women of the Force for their work. And I want them to continue to do what they have to do. I also want to thank the RSS, members of the Regional Security System, who were also on the ground for the Carnival Days and also to extend my congratulations to the icons over there. And Mr. Speaker, you fail to say that Bradley is from my constituency. You forgot, you forgot. At the last sitting, the member for Swazil claimed, claimed, yeah. He told me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, Mr. Speaker, that being said, I'll proceed with, with the resolution. Whereas it is provided under Section 46.4e of the Value Added Tax, Cap 15.4 to the Act, that the Ministry of Responsible Finance may, by order published in the Gazette, alter the rate of penalty under the Act. And whereas it is further provided that under Section 46.a, 4a of the Act, that an order may an order made pursuant to Section 46.4a of the Act is subject to an affirmative resolution of Parliament. And whereas the Minister for Finance seeks approval of the draft value added tax alteration of rate of penalty order by an, an affirmative resolution of Parliament to alter from the first day of May 2023 to the first day of May 2024 the rate of penalty to 0% of the tax paid on the fin up to the financial year 2021. Be it resolved that Parliament, by affirmative resolution, approves the value added tax alteration of rate of penalty order, which alters from the first day of May 2023 to the first day of May 2024, the rate of penalty to 0% on the tax paid up to the financial year of 2021. Mr. Speaker, you may recall that last sitting, I came to Parliament and asked for a resolution to waive the interest, Mr. Speaker, the interest on the value added tax and other taxes, Mr. Speaker. All, all interest and penalties, Mr. Mr. Speaker, on all taxes, the VAT, the PAYE, the hotel accommodation tax, withholding tax, Mr. Speaker. We waived last sitting, we waived the interest on these tax taxes and the penalties, but we could not waive the penalties on VAT because the VAT Act is a separate act and it's a sacred act 
and sometimes we do we is not is is not advisable to always be um, altering etc. So we had so we had to come to Parliament today to waive the penalties, Mr. Speaker, on VAT. So as we speak, after this resolution is passed, all the taxes, the HAT, the accumulation tax, the VAT, the PAYE, withholding taxes, there will be there will be no penalties and interest on all these taxes. They will be waived on all these taxes up to May 2024. Just because that is a significant re relief to the private sector mm -hmm. and to the people, the business people who collected VAT but did not pay it over to the government. What this means, Mr. Speaker, is that, as I said, there was, there's $599 million worth of taxes due to the government, including interest and penalties. $599 million due, including interest and penalties. What we've done, Mr. Speaker, is we've waived interest and penalties of nearly $300 million. It's waived completely. And we're asking the people who owe the government to please pay up what you owe because the government has waived the penalties and interest. But Mr. Mr. Speaker, that is significant in that when you read or you hear about comments on people's balance sheets, when you owe the government, Mr. Speaker, in penalties and interest, it has to be shown in your balance sheet, not only as an account, but as an accounts payable, or if you want, if you want to be, if you want to be creative, you can put it as a long-term liability, so it doesn't affect your working capital ratios. But still, for that, you have to include it, Mr. Speaker. You have to include it in your balance sheet because you owe the government. It's not contingent; you owe it. What that will do is that these businesses now can reverse these payables. They can reverse it. Uh, Mr. Speaker. So it becomes they have to reverse it, debit the payables, Mr. Speaker, and credit the tax owed. So that means it reduces the tax that they owe to the government and improves their balance sheet. Improves it significantly. So they can go to the bank and say to the bank, I do not owe these amount of taxes, Mr. Speaker. So that is a tremendous help to the private sector. And no one can say that this government is not trying to assist the private sector, Mr. Speaker, not trying to assist them after COVID. But these taxes were not due for COVID. These taxes were due long before COVID. We've waived all of them. So this is the government's commitment to the growth and the expansion of the private sector, Mr. Speaker. And I've said before in this honorable house, that this government, no one can ever accuse this government of being anti-business or not supporting the business sector in St. Lucia. And it is clear, Mr. Speaker, it is clear. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm very pleased to ask members to support this resolution, to support this tax amnesty which you've done, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, the tax amnesty also goes to personal income tax also, you know. People who owe personal income tax, Mr. Speaker, will be waiving all the interest and the penalties. We waive it up to May 2023. We will extend it now up to May 2024 for people who owe personal income tax, Mr. Speaker. So this amnesty is unheard of in the history of St. Lucia's private sector, Mr. Speaker. All I'm asking is meet the government halfway. We've, we've done our part. All I'm asking for the private sector and the people who owe taxes, please come to pay the government, Mr. Speaker, because when you pay the government, many things will happen in a different way. And I want to say, Mr. Speaker, we are committed. We are committed. If what we are owed, we pay. When we have to pay a refund, we will refund. But we can't refund what we, what we haven't got. Because refund, Mr. Speaker, means that you've filled in your, your tax and the government has the money for you. We will pay. Once everybody pays, we will pay.
And I also want to tell taxpayers to please go to change your tax code. Change your tax code so that they cannot, the government cannot take undue taxes for you, from you, Mr. Speaker. So you change your, your tax code. Now, it's very simple. There's no charge. Go to Inner Revenue and change your tax code so that the tax you pay every month it will not accumulate in terms of you pay the government too much, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I ask members to support, and I'll be back with other resolutions that will give further relief to the business sector and the taxpayers of the country. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. <coughs>